Hey everyone, Sean and Moo. Hey guys. I got my kinesiologist right here next to me. He's gonna confirm that the shoulders have no range of motion whatsoever. Not even a couple of degrees once the grip is on the club. So why are we all trying to turn our shoulders when they're just sitting on top of the rib cage along for the ride? Right out of the gate. Let's look at the structure of the shoulders, right, Moo? Yeah. And it interrupt me if I'm going a little off. But here's your clavicle. Correct. There's your scapula. That's right. They're strapped to this body with a whole host of different muscle groups. That's right. The arm swing is a nice socket that's beneath the shoulder, and you've got a lot of range of motion there. Right. But the shoulders themselves don't have a lot. No. And when you bring your hands together mm -hmm. to take your grip, well, now you barely have a couple of degrees. Yeah, it's pretty minimal. So when I see some of you trying to turn your shoulders a certain way, steeper, flatter, whatever, well, then you're raking the whole rib cage and pelvis down with it, dragging it in the mud and throwing yourself completely off balance. Right. So how does this work? Moo, let me take your club. Sure. Face the camera, please. Okay. So if I were to tell Moo, hey Moo, hold your arm out to your side, let it fall. So you've got 360 degrees of range of motion in that arm socket, right. but it's useless if your body's in the way. Correct. So you bend forward, let your arms hang. Yeah. So now hold your arm out to your side, let it fall in front of you, and you notice the upper arm is now crashing into your rib cage, yeah. and you still have very limited range of motion. Yeah. Now the, the range of motion just happens to be in the elbow. Correct. Yeah. If you add any velocity to that, you're going to slap yourself silly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now if I say to you, hold the arm out. Yeah. Let the arm fall toward the bushes there. Beautiful. Yeah. Now notice the shoulders are sitting on top of the rib cage, and it's the rib cage and the pelvis that are turning out of the way to allow the arms to swing past you. So this happens in all disciplines right and in your boxing yeah right so yeah. if i'm going to snap a punch towards your hand mm -hmm. notice my rib cage and my pelvis are turning on top of my hips and my legs and this is pardon me this is what allows me to get that full range of motion that full extension towards moo that's right? right yeah so if you take a golf club now yeah and now you handcuff your hands in that grip so the golf swing, in essence, is really simple. You're going to allow your right arm to swing freely in the backswing. So notice now the rib cage and pelvis are completely out of the way. See that beautiful rotation? You're seeing a lot more of this on all the tours around the world. So where the lower body is allowing to move fully and freely. So now let the uh, left arm swing toward the bushes. So notice now beautiful full finish. So in essence, the shoulders were along for the ride, out of the way, out of the way. Now do it back and through without stopping. Okay. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. There we go. So you can see now that in order for the arm to swing freely, the shoulder frame yeah. is turning on top of the rib cage and moving in that direction. So if you did, I'll, I'll do it from right-handed over here. Sure. So if I do exactly what Moo just did, I'll go out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. So notice on the way through, see how my shoulders look tilted? That's because I'm allowing the club to follow along the ground and towards the target. If I went at the ball, see what happens now? So the movement of the rib cage and pelvis is moving out and over, and now I'm gonna have that roundhouse look at the end of the swing. So if all we do is allow the arms to swing freely in both directions, we're going to create a beautiful arc. Now we're going to show you in the next segment 
how to use that arc to deliver golf shots towards the target, and then you'll see how those shoulders are going to feel oily all the way through. So before we put it all together for you, we want to let you know that we've got a wonderful premium channel where you're going to see my life's work and a super one-on-one -on -one training program with either myself or Munashe. Moo's specialty is speed training. He's number 70 in the world of long drive. Ball speeds is now 215 miles an hour. It was never like that. I used to be longer than you. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So he's going to show you, and as he's been showing Savannah, she's number eight in the world now. Over 160 miles an hour ball speed for Sav, and we're closing in on 120 miles an hour club head speed. If you want some of that for yourself, you need to get in touch with Moo through our website at wisdomandgolfpremium.com. And if you want to elaborate on your technique first, you come and see me. I've got a beautiful weekly program where we get together once a week and we polish that pearl and we get you to that next level very, very quickly. Okay? Back to our programming. Okay, here we go. Now, what you're going to do is hold your club upside down like a sword and we're going to go complete your backswing. And what you're turning in the backswing is your rib cage and your pelvis on top of the hips. So if I turn my whole backside to the target, that includes my rear end, you'll notice now I've got full freedom with my lead arm. So now I'm going to use that momentum now that I've created through that range of motion to feel a nice slash right through. So notice on this side, same thing turn my back to the target and look at how wide this is. You create width through rotation and the rotation doesn't happen in the shoulders because if I just did shoulders, that's about all I would get and everything's getting stuck behind me. But if I turn my whole back to the target, look at the width and the freedom that I have now. So that's what we're turning from the legs through the pelvis and rib cage and then now we've got the width for the arms. How do we get all that back to the target? Because a lot of you are going to get there and you're going to go, oh my gosh, how do I get back to the ball? All we need is a target bound task. Remember what I said, let the arm fall past you and towards the target. So here's me letting the arm fall past me towards you. My arm is swinging freely towards you. That means I've allowed my whole backside to turn. And then I'm going to let the right arm swing past me and towards my target. So my target right now is that academy building. You'll see my intermediate point right here. So I'm going to let my arms swing past me and towards the academy building. So when I get to the top of my backswing, so when I swing back and through without stopping here, you'll notice my club creates a blur. Can you see where the club is passing? That's showing me how far I should be from the ball and it's showing me direction. So notice the direction of that blur is moving over that T and in the direction of that building. So now all I got to do is get out of the way, get out of the way. So turn my whole back to the target let the arm club unit swing toward the target. So look at how free that looks right there. Okay. So that gives me gorgeous, gorgeous ball contact. A real quick tidbit. If I only had one arm and I'm letting my arm swing freely, notice the big circle that creates. But when I bring both arms together, wow, now I better get this out of the way because that's the only way that I'm going to get that big circle in my arm swing now as well. So you'll also notice that the center of this arm swing is my right shoulder. And notice the club keeps cutting grass right underneath my right shoulder. Bring both hands together. Now you'll notice that the grass is getting cut starting from the center of my stance forward. So if I play the ball in the center of my stance, and I line up my machine towards that academy building. All I got to do now, I don't even have to worry about ball contact. It's just out of the way, out of the way. 
and it's just like unbelievably solid contact. The ball is just flying out there, and that Rapsodo should be giving me a pretty decent yardage. So to finalize, we can't turn shoulders. So we must turn the body out of the way. And while we're doing that, we pay attention to where the club is passing. So if the club is passing too high, well, then all I got to do is come down. So notice how I'm coming down. Your brain knows exactly how much. Why? Because I can see how much I'm missing by right now. And if I lower, there you go. Off toward the building it goes. And I was just a quarter groove low on that. You can see how easy it was for my brain to lower myself to the right level. So your base of your swing is get out of the way, out of the way. Enjoy that. See you next week.